Well, there's something kind of weird going on here. I've just ridden that descent pretty briskly with no air in my tires. They are completely deflated. How? I've got some new tech here from Vittoria. It's called Airliner Road, and it's kind of a bit like a run flat system for bikes, except it's a run flat system that weighs as little as 24 grams per wheel. It's a run flat system that doesn't add to your rolling resistance at all. Your tire works completely normally. And it's also a run flat system that's been used in secret in the Pro Peloton for two years. Interested? Let me tell you more. Here you go then, the Airliner Road, a hexagonal loop of foam that fits inside your tubeless tire. Sounds simple, and in principle it is, but the devil is in the details. You might be familiar with the concept of run flats in cars, but these are very, very different. So in a car, the sidewall of the tire is reinforced so that it can actually support the weight of the vehicle. This would be disastrous on a bike because what we really want from our tires is for a lightweight, supple casing that feels as smooth as silk to ride and rolls like a whisper. Now, fortunately, Vittoria have been around for a bit. They're one of the top tire manufacturers, so they know this too, so they've approached it differently. Now, at this point, tech-savvy viewers might be saying, well, hang on a minute, Vittoria have been selling airliners for mountain bike and gravel applications for a while now. And yes, they absolutely have, but these, again, are different. So for off-road purposes, the airliner is designed to do well, a number of things, actually. Firstly, it's designed to provide improved damping of your tire when you're running lower pressure. It's also designed to support the tyre sidewall, particularly for cornering, again, when you're running lower pressures for improved traction. And it also stops the tyre casing from burping, again, at lower pressures. And the final thing is it also is designed to protect your rim from rock strikes, again, when running lower pressures. But the thing is, on the road, we don't need to run really low pressures for improved traction. We need to run kind of low pressures sometimes for improved comfort. But Vittoria still spotted a use for this type of technology. So what they've done is they've actually changed the properties of the foam polymer so that when you inflate your tire, this then shrinks to a fraction of its size and then just lies hidden snugly in the rim bed. And you can see just how much it shrinks from this video. What it means then is it allows your super lightweight, supple tire to do its thing unimpeded, behaving completely normally because effectively there is nothing inside it, just fractionally less air volume because there's this tiny little strip of foam that's lying secretly inside the rim bed. When you do get a puncture though, as the pressure decreases in the tire, the airliner then increases in volume. So it fills the void left in the tire. Vittoria says it's equivalent to riding about 30 PSI or two bar. So the tire does still feel flat, but you're not riding on the rim, not anywhere close. Importantly too, the airliner is still really securely holding the bead of the tire in place on the rim. So the tires aren't gonna slide or roll off when you're cornering. So this means there's no more risk from blowouts, those super fast punctures that would otherwise cause you to crash or hit the deck. So instead, were you to get a blowout, you can just continue riding safely and securely until you get home or till your team car rocks up with a new wheel. So I think there's a couple of things we need to tackle here. Firstly, pro cyclists have seemingly adopted this tech quickly and eagerly. Why? And then secondly, how is that relevant for the rest of us? Let's tackle the pro cycling question first, shall we? Until about three or four years ago, pro cyclists raced on tubular tires, and that was basically that. There were one or two exceptions, but they were notable for being exceptions. And the reason for this love of tubulars was firstly that they were faster, so they literally rolled more efficiently than clincher tires. And then secondly, if you got a puncture, you could still keep riding safely. And that's because tubular tires are glued onto the rim. So if you go around a corner, they're not gonna roll off. You're able to slow the bike down from high speeds or indeed keep riding on a rim until you can get a replacement from your team car. 
Now, for us mere mortals, tubular tires are kind of expensive and also a massive pain, because unless you've got an army of mechanics behind you, they're quite a faff. But for racing, they were great. Now, Things began to change though, because tubular tires are no longer the fastest types of tires out there. Some tubeless tires can be quicker. So pros were tempted to use them, but they were still failing at that can you keep riding on a flat hurdle. However, times have changed. Now you can use super fast tubeless tires and you can still ride with them on a flat, perhaps better, far better in fact, than if you were using a tubular. So, as I said, a few teams have had access to this tech. UAE Emirates have been riding it for a couple of years. Alexander Kristoff, in fact, won Gent Wevel game in 2019 using a prototype airliner. EF Nippo are the other team that have got access to this tech. And so I'm just about to catch up with their technical director, Andreas Clear, to find out how the team is using this tech and how many riders have adopted it. Andreas, thanks very much for, for talking to us today. So, I'm wondering whether you could give me the, the inside scoop on how the team is using tubeless tyres and airliners. So, so at the moment, is it a blanket swap from tubulars to tubeless, or is it there's still a case of some races the riders are on tubulars and some they're on tubeless? Yeah, I mean in general they can choose, right? Uh, they they did so last year. They did so in the very beginning, the the season before when we when we started to do testing uh, with with prototypes of the airliners. Uh, uh, given the fact that we knew that tubeless is absolutely faster, not every rider bought into it uh, immediately, but more and more the riders uh, understand the advantage from uh, from a from a tubeless uh, tire versus a, a tubular. There is a mix here and there. We have races where we ride fully tubeless. We have other races where not a single rider is riding tubeless. Um, so, yeah, that's the current standing. Okay. And do you, do you know, do the riders ever give you the insight into why they're making a decision of one type of tyre versus another? Are they, is it that they, they still feel that tubulars are faster even though the data kind of backs up tubeless being faster? No. No, that never comes up. Okay. Nobody would lift his hand and say tubular is faster than tubeless. You, you have quite a choice inside our team. And the good thing is you are free to choose. And at the end of the day, you always get what you want. Uh, we're a very transparent team and uh, the riders like it. I like it. Maybe the mechanics uh, have quite some work with it. It's a lot of logistics, uh, but so far things go quite well. and. Uh, yeah, the riders appreciate it. For tomorrow's race to uh, a game, I think it's a split between four tubula and three tubeless, kind of. Flanders, let's see, probably same or other way around. It's the big advantage you have, obviously, uh, talking about classics uh, with, with an airliner, is once you ride a flat, you just keep on riding. So we have that with Alberto and Gent Wiffelgem. He rode a front flat in the side wind. It was a moment when there's 22 man group went uh, off the road we basically couldn't react but it wasn't even the moment to stop and uh, just change the bike so um, knowing that 4k later uh, you had a section of 2k headwind i just said uh, keep on riding and once you turn at whatever how many kilometers uh, into the left you just stop and then i give you a front wheel right So where does that leave the rest of us then? Well, firstly, who doesn't want to go faster for less effort? Fast tires feel amazing. And it's for this reason that I'm finally turning to tubeless on the road. I've been there for two decades off-road. I have been slow to adopt on the road, I will admit. But more important than that for many people is no longer have to worry about changing an inner tube at the side of the road. It might be that you're new to the sport. It might be that you lack confidence doing that with this you literally could just roll home. Or it might be that when you ride, you're tight on time and you can't afford to spend five minutes faffing around within the tube at the side of the road, perhaps when you're commuting. So it's kind of cool that this tech benefits the pros and people that are really new to the sport as well. But then I think most important of all is going to be this safety issue. I know that a lot of people really worry about having blowouts. 
And having these could potentially remove that anxiety instantly. You've seen me riding them flat. There's nothing to worry about anymore, I don't think. Airliners are sold individually or as part of a kit like this one. In it, you get two airliners. You also get a tool to help you take the airliners off. You also get some sealant and two valves which have got the air holes coming out sideways as well as out the end. So that helps you inflate and deflate. They're less likely to get blocked by sealant. Now what you don't get are tires, and that's fundamentally because you can use any tubeless tires with this setup. They do have to be tubeless because, as you probably worked out already, the airliner goes where your inner tube goes. There are three sizes available. You've got small for 25mm wide tires in 21mm wide rim beds. You've got medium for 28 in 23mm wide rim beds, and large for 30mm tires inside 26 mill rim beds. Yeah, you didn't see that one coming, did you? Now, weights are really light. I mean, it is just a piece of foam. So just 24 grams for a small, 31 grams for a medium, and 39 grams for a large. As I've been saying, the airliner itself is made of a foam polymer that doesn't absorb sealant. So your sealant is free to move around the inside of the tire and do its job of potentially sealing small punctures. Now, one thing though is Victoria do say that you should avoid using a sealant that has ammonia in it, okay? And that's because the ammonia could potentially degrade the airliner over time, which of course you don't want, because once fitted, this thing is just gonna last and last otherwise. To fit the airliners, it's just like putting in, in a tube in, to be quite honest, albeit one that's partially inflated. Once you then pump up your tyres and you put your sealant in, you get that nice firm seal between tyre and rim. What it does mean though, is that when it comes to taking your tyres off, you require this little gizmo, which is a special tool that Victoria have created. Now, it's not harder to mount and dismount per se, it's just a slightly different requirement, different technique. Now, the reason being that normally when you're taking off a tubeless tire, you'd break the seal with your thumbs, you pop the bead of the tire into the well of the rim, which is like the bit with the smallest diameter, and that gives you a little bit more slack to play with, and then you pop the tire off, often with just your thumbs, and away you go. Here though, the airliner sits in the well of the rim, so it's much harder to break that seal and then get the required slack, which is where this gizmo comes in, because as you can see, you can squish the tire, break the seal, and then you have these six little clips, okay? So they sit inside the sidewall of the rim, and that basically pushes the tire so that you get the required slack to then pop it off. Now what that does mean is that it's not possible to stick an inner tube in, in an emergency at the roadside. Now of course you're running tubeless, so the chances of punctures have decreased and you can't get pinched flats anymore because there's no inner tube in there. And the sealant will seal small holes like those caused by thorns or broken glass. In fact, Victoria say their sealant can seal up to seven millimeter long cuts, which is pretty impressive. But every now and then you do get a flat with tubeless that means you've got to stick a tire boot in and an inner tube. With this, you can't do that. So I think for super long epic rides where you can't limp home on a flat, then you probably need to bear that in mind. When Victoria first told us about this tech, I thought it seemed like a really good idea and I'm interested to spend some more time on it. You've also got to say, it's a pretty inexpensive piece of tech as well. So that full TLR kit that I've just showed you retails for either 80 euros, 89 pounds or 99 dollars and you can buy the airliners individually for between 30 to 40 euros, pounds or dollars. Now, of course, it is just a piece of foam, you might say, but it's more than that, isn't it? There's a lot of thought and a lot of energy and effort goes into making that. Andreas Clear was telling us about the different prototypes that they've been riding over the last year. And so, as price often is, it's about more than just the cost of raw materials. I should imagine that some of you are gonna be thinking, well, there's nothing wrong with inner tubes. And you're right, there is nothing wrong with inner tubes, but there's some pretty compelling reasons to go tubeless now. And you also can't argue with the safety factor at play here as well. That also is very compelling indeed. 
And I think there's something cool about tech that's been adopted by pro cyclists, but yet is also really, really tailor-made for those new to the sport as well. Do make sure you let us know in the comments section what you think. I'd be really interested to read your first impressions. Otherwise, please give this video a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it.